Blessings, everyone. Blessings. Thank you so much for coming in on our Accordies in Christ prayer long. Um, I appreciate y'all being here on, on this Thursday. Hallelujah for a new day. Give God thanks and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for letting us see a new day. Father, you didn't have to let us see this day, but you gave us breath in our lungs. We can breathe. Thank you, Father, for that. Even though we might have situations, might have problems, just the fact that we can open our eyes and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because my hallelujah belongs to you. It don't belong to anybody else. It belongs to Christ. My hallelujah belongs to you. Why it belongs to him? Because you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Not no matter what's going your way, no matter the problems that you're facing on yesterday, you faced yesterday that you're facing today. My hallelujah belongs to you. Still get him that hallelujah. You hear me? My hallelujah belongs to me. Why? Because he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. Because all the glory, all the praise, he deserves it. He deserves it. Sometimes when you're going through, you got to offer up a sacrifice. See, the word lets us know that it ain't going to be easy all the time to praise him. Because if it was, if it was easy, he would have said, you know, you got to offer up a sacrifice of praise. What you willing to give up so you can get your praise? Because you can't allow people to hold you back from praising God because that's what the enemy will do. He'll use people. He'll use things and situations and circumstances. He'll use bills. He don't care who, what or who he used. We must praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Everything. Not some things. Everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So don't allow the enemy to steal your praise. Don't allow the enemy to keep you from worshiping because he deserves it. He's a mighty God and he deserves the reverence and respect. And I thank you, Abba Father. I cry, Abba Father. I think Father is the, is the greatest and highest thing you can say unto God. He can't relate to just, yeah, we have our earthly dads here on earth, but he is so much greater and so much higher. He deserves that title, Abba, Father. Because <laughs> he's so great. I wouldn't even want to bring him down to my status. I'm like, Jesus, you came down here. You know, as we're like little, little, but you came down in, in my status as this little human being. To be able to call mother and dad and, you know, 
children. Like, you're so much higher than this. But you came down for us to be this, for us to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. And how much more should we offer? This is our reasonable service unto you, Father. And I just thank God on today. I thank God he blessed us another day. And he deserves a hallelujah. And I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful to God. Uh, because when the enemy comes up and try to destroy you and try to do things to you, God always steps in with his mighty hands. He's so he's, he's such a strong tower, and he is truly a very present help in times of trouble. And I see when you're going through your test and your storm, and you can't see your way out, you don't know what to do. You, you don't know what to do. And you're like, man, I'm in this. I'm going to get out of this. And, and it's so easy to complain. I'm talking myself, y'all. It's so easy to complain. And Lord, I don't know. I'm just, Lord, there's just this and that. And I'm going through this and all this. And then God said, I got you. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you, child. Just hold on. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Hold on and wait just a little while. He'll bring a song of strength in the midnight. Touch our hearts with your loving hands. Hold on and just hold on. He's telling us to hold on. Hold on and wait just a little while. See, we don't want to wait. We don't want to be patient. He'll be your song of strength in the midnight. Touch our lives with your loving hand. Hold on. Just hold on. We got to hold on. You got to keep reminding yourself. Hold on. Hold on. I can't let go. I can't give up. I can't give in. I got to hold on because he's going to be my song of strength in the midnight. It's too many examples in the word. Look at Job. That's one of the greatest examples. Look at Job. Hey. The greatest one in the word is Jesus because he is the word. Look at Jesus. <laughs> the disciples thought it was over, y'all. They thought it was done. They thought it was, that's it. That's it, y'all. It's no good. But guess what? He brought a song of strength. All you got to do is hold on. Hold on and wait. He'll be your song of strength in the midnight. And and they had to hold on. They was giving up and they was they was dismayed and, and they didn't know what to do. Jesus dead. He's dead, y'all. They got him. Jesus said, I've been wanting y'all all this time. But on the third day, hallelujah. On the third day. Rose up. They got to see his nail scarred hands. They got to see Jesus face to face. Just imagine that day. But just imagine that day when we see Jesus face to face. When we feel like, oh, our hope is lost and I'm going through this. And, and God said, look, that you see that rainbow? You see that light at the end of that tunnel? Keep going. You can do this. You got this. And when we see Jesus face to face on that glorious day, what's that song? What a day it will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day. A glorious day that will be. What a day, what a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. Hallelujah. When he takes me by the hand, hand in hand. And leads me to. The promise then what a day, a glorious day that will be. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
What a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Daughter, come in. Come in to my abode. Come in and rest. Rest from all your labor, from all the work that you have done. Come into me. I want you to stop with me. Praise God. Praise God. He prepared a table before the presence of my enemies, y'all. Praise God. I'm sitting there eating and enjoying the good food of the Lord while, the, while my enemies are in calamity. They don't know what to do. But guess what? I know a God that can heal, deliver, set free. And I pray for my enemies because God can set you free. God can deliver you. And even in the midst of all that we're going through, when your enemy, when Satan, the devourer, try to come your way, know that he's already destroyed. He's already defeated. He just have to wait for the time to come. God already finished the book. He, he knows all things from the beginning to the end. He knows what we're going to do, say, think, whatever. He knows it all. So when you're going through things, just trust God through the midst of the storm. Because when you're going through and you don't know what to do, when the fire gets so high, don't draw nigh. So hold your head up high and be a good cheer. Cause all you need to know, your deliverer is here. So count it all joy. 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 See, that's what you ought to do. Count it all joy, not sit and pout. Count it all joy, count it all joy. Now I know you sit and ask yourself so many times. Why does it seem like I am losing my mind? Now as I sit and I reminisce on all that I've been through. I realize it's not about me, but about you. I count it all joy. See, it's not about me. I count it all joy. It's about him. I count it all joy. I'm a count it all joy. I'm counting it all joy because that's what i ought to do i'm counting it all joy i'm counting it all joy counting it all joy we gonna count it joy y'all because he deserves everything he deserves it all we are nothing without him we are nothing but with him we can do all things, all things through Christ because he is our strength. He is our redeemer. He is our very present help in times of trouble. He is always there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to open up our hearts and believe. We got to trust God. We got to allow our hearts to be broken for him. Because we know that that's one thing he will not reject. And so I just want to talk about the love of Jesus. How Jesus loved us so much. And some people don't realize like, oh, I messed up so many times. God don't love me. God don't care. He loves you. No matter what we have done in our past. He is such a forgiving God and such a just and, and loving God. And I want to show you here how loving our father is in Luke chapter 15. Thank you, Jesus. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. 
And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, this man receives sinners and eateth with them. You hear that? Just so bougie. <laughs> and he spake this parable unto them. Because see, Jesus is not just sitting with sinners just to eat with them, just to conversate and be like them. Oh, because so many people say, well, Jesus sat with sinners. Well, Jesus didn't sit with them so they can continue on being sinners, though. He was there to be the light. So when we're around sinners, we are there to be a light, not to blend in with darkness. Because if we blend in with darkness, then it's either are we really saved or we're being lukewarm. And Jesus told us that, you know, he will remove that candlestick. He said, quickly repent. We got to quickly come back. Well, he'll remove that candlestick out of his place. And therefore, you ain't going to have nowhere to put no light. Lord, I want you to remove your candlestick. Keep it there, Lord. I want my candle to be lit like on fire. I want it to shine bright where people know who I am. You know, it's something when you at work and with um, this job I used to work at. And um, you got people that take up for you. You ain't, you ain't got to say a word. You got you have sinners take up for you. Uh-uh, you can't cuss around her. She's a Christian. She's a believer. You can't do that. And that's something that shows that that's the light of Christ in you that other people are willing to take up for you. Like, you don't even say a word. You're going to be like, uh-uh, hold up, honey. I, I'm a sanctified believer. I believe in Jesus Christ, my holy Savior. And you cussing around me? Who you think you are? You just be a light. All you got to do is be a light. And they see that light in you. You got people that come up to them and say, hold up. No, you're being disrespectful. She's a leaver. Don't cuss around her. All you got to do is be that light. So Jesus was that light. He was sitting there being that light, making conversations, letting them know about his love, letting them know about him, who is the word, of course. He's the word. So he's telling them about him. And so they would they they got mad. So Jesus was like, okay, let, let me just spit some parables out at him. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine, the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? What kind of love is this? That's the kind of love of Jesus that we have. Jesus loves us so much. He loves us so much that he will leave the 99 to go and look for that one sheep. He said, until he find it. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders rejoicing. He rejoices because the sheep that was lost is now found. And he is so happy about finding that sheep you you think jesus is not happy about that jesus is happy to find his lost sheep which is his children which is us when we are lost he is searching he wants you to come back he wants all of you and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. This is the excitement Jesus feels about us. When we were once lost and we came to Christ, and he found us. Jesus, Lord. This is the love of Jesus for those that you don't know. He is seeking after you. He's calling your name. He wants you to come home. He wants you to come unto him. Wow, what a blessing. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Why would they rejoice over the ninety and nine when they are already saved? But he said, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented. Heaven is rejoicing. They having a wonderful heavenly party over you, one soul. That's the love of Jesus. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver and she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. 
This silver is worth so much. And they got to find the silver. She's looking. I have to find my silver. She's sweeping the house and she's looking around to find the silver. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost. Wow. Rejoice with me. That's amazing. That's amazing, right? For she has found that silver. <laughs> That's so beautiful. It's so beautiful that this is this is how the Lord feels about us. This is how the Lord feels about us. That he will get all his heavenly hosts together. And they will rejoice. <laughs> and he said, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. There is joy in the presence of the angels. <laughs> and he said, a certain man had two sons. So let's listen to this parable. This is a beautiful, beautiful parable. And the younger of them said, to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living, just doing whatever he wanted to do. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want see i'm gonna tell you the love of god when you stray away from him and you think oh i got it good and all these good things happening god will do things to cause you to come back you see now he was good he when there was no famine everything was good he had money everything was good but all of a sudden he had famine in his pockets no money in his pockets and a mighty famine came upon the land. Soon as he ran out of money, that's when famine came. See, sometimes we, sometimes our tests and trials and tribulations are because God is trying to pull us back. Because sometimes when you're at the lowest of your low, that's when you cry out to God. You, you look up. When you're so low, sometimes, most of the time you look up and you realize, I need God. Wow, I need the Lord. So after this mighty famine in the land came, so he, he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. So he became a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He said, I need to work. So he probably he probably didn't know how it was to work like that. He lived good. He was eating good. He was living good, but he wanted his own. So he went into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he had to come to himself. He was eating like the swine, y'all. He was so low that he had to look up. So he came to himself. See, God will let us be so low that we have to look up. He loves us that much that he'll let us get so low that we have to look up. <laughs> So he was so low, y'all. Wow, this is this is amazing. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger? I have a father in heaven that's so much greater 
so much stronger, so much wiser. They can give me anything I need. He promised to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I'm here. I'm here going through this. So he said, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against the heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Not worthy to be called thy son. Lord, just make me as, as one of thy higher servants. I'm happy to be a servant. Like A servant can eat good. A servant still get great things. Perfect and pure, pure in all your ways. Oh, Lord, there is none else like you, no one like you. And all these things keep me in all of you. For I'm overwhelmed that you would call me friend. Said I'm overwhelmed that you would call me friend. I would be honored just to be a servant, but I'm overwhelmed that you would call me friend. See, he said, I, no, <laughs> I'll be glad to be a servant, but he said, no, you're my friend. Because he has great love for us that he will call us friend. <laughs> So he said, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the higher servants. I'm not even worthy to be your son. I messed up so much, Lord. I, I, I don't deserve the title of son. But if you allow me to be your servant, I'll be happy to be your servant, Lord. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. This is how Jesus feel about us. When he see us coming home, when he see us, he is so excited. And the son said unto his father, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, servants, bring forth the best robe and put, on, put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. I told him to put a ring on his hand. Whew. And bring hither the fatted cow and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be married. Now his elder son was in the field now. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. What's going on in here? And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, thy brother is come and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. This is heaven rejoicing. With them rejoicing, he rejoicing. heaven is rejoicing over that one loss. And he was angry though and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered, said to his father, lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, son, Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. See, when you that sheep that stays, don't be jealous over the one that comes back. Rejoice too. He says, so you've been with me. You have everything I had was yours. 
and everything you had, every, every anything I had, it belonged to you. So you didn't have no wants. It was meat that we should make merry and be glad. For this, thy brother was dead, is alive again, and was lost and is found. Praise God, praise God for that. Praise God for that. So we rejoice because that son was lost and now found. And this is how God feels about us. When we once was lost and now we're found. What amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Because of amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now i am found was blind but now i see thank you lord so i'm gonna leave with this song and then i'm gonna go into prayer this is the kind of love that God has for us and sometimes we feel we're not worthy of that love when he said yes you are you're worthy. That's why I called you back home. Because if you wasn't worthy, you'd be out there in the world doing your own thing, living a life that you want to live. But I softened your heart. And I showed you how much I love you and how much I need you. How much I need you. Because I called you, I appointed you from the beginning. I need you, my child, to come home. You need me in your life because you can't do it without me. So I need you to come home. How can you forgive me when I have gone astray? How can you think of me when I've done things? my way turning my back from you the one who loved me first having my own desires renewing worldly thirst you told me you could keep me but I've turned it away I failed you so much now. I don't know what to say. Feeling so very weak. You say I can't be strong. I feel I've gone too far. You tell me to come home. You love me still. And I know this is real. And I am running back to you. I see you standing there for me. Your arms are open wide. And I don't have to cry no more. You're standing there for me. And I am running back to you. Why do I go away when I know I am no good when I'm on my own? See, you told me you can love me and I should make up my mind. You tell me, come back now. But I keep wasting time using that same excuse that I am just a man. You tell me you've been there, 
and hold your nailed scarred hands so i can see now i know i am free and i am running back to you i see you're standing there for me your arms are open wide and i don't have to cry no more because you're standing there for me and i am running back to you why do i go away when i know i am no good when i'm on my own see i have taken advantage of your love and grace forgive me lord and take me home take me home because i'm running to you jesus please take me home see if i've been in the wrong way too long and i can't do right anymore i'm tired of pain and i don't like fear but lord i want to be so sincere i never should have left your side return me to your guiding light because i'm running back to you i see you standing there for me and your arms are open wide and i don't have to cry no more because you're standing there for me and i am running back to you lord why do i go away when i know i am no good when i'm on my own i'm running back to you jesus so if you that person that is there in the muck in the mire you have straight away you turned your back on christ he said i am married to the backslider come back to christ he is calling out your name he wants to hear from you god loves you he needs you he needs you to come back to him he cares for you he cares about you and father god we just thank you right now father we bless your holy name for you are worthy to be praised. We bless the Lord, all our souls and all that is within us, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that many will return back to you, Lord. Lord, they will live that life, Lord, unto you, Father. That, Lord, you will take us in, Lord. You will accept us, Lord. Accept us, Lord Jesus. We're nothing without you we're nothing without you we need you father we need you in our life father i pray lord jesus that many will heed the call lord jesus they will lord want to come back unto you lord jesus so lord we know that heaven will rejoice heaven will will be great the, the angels will rejoice heaven will be grateful to hear and see that a sinner has come unto god that the lost sheep has came back into the fold and lord we rejoice with them lord we're not going to sit there and be jealous and say oh why they get this and why they get that lord we're going to rejoice we're going to be glad and we're going to bless you lord because lord we could be that lost sheep out there we could be out there eating whatever partaking in whatever and doing whatever right now but thank you lord that you have called us in we was once that lost sheep we was once lost but lord you found us hallelujah because you was always there you was always there we was the one that was lost and we thank you lord for finding us we thank you lord we thank you for the love of jesus what kind of love is this what an amazing love that we have in in jesus what a friend we have in jesus what a gracious god that we have what a mighty god we serve and we bless the name of the lord
We bless the Lord. We praise the Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We give you your, your due praise and your honor, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for being who you are and being just that in our life. What we need you to be, we thank you for that, Lord. And we bless you and we glorify you, Lord. We lift your name on high. And I pray, Lord, that, Lord, you will keep us, Lord. And, Lord, when we do make a mistake, we do complain. When we do get frustrated, when we do get stressed out, when we do mess up, Lord, that we can come back to you and repent and ask you, Lord, to keep us. Help us, Lord, to stop falling short. We already know we're going to fall short of your glory, Lord. And we can never get to the high expectation of your glory that we want to be until that day we are we are with you. But before then, Lord, help us and keep us. Holy Spirit, we need you to deal with our hearts whenever we are straight. Call us back home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Call us back home, Father. And we bless you and we love you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you have done. We thank you for calling us home and bringing us back into the fold. And I pray, Lord, that many will come back unto you. And I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because you are good. You are good. Good. Oh. Because you're never going to let. Never going to let me down. He's never going to let. Never going to let you down. Because he is good. He's a good, good father. Oh, oh, he is good, good, good. Thank you, Lord, for being so good and great and mighty and a strong tower and a very present help in times of trouble. We thank you, Father, for that. And we bless you. And we lift you up because you are good. And I pray, Lord, for those, Lord, that are in need, Lord. Every name that I have written on my prayer list, Lord, you know them. You know what's going on. You know that situation and circumstances that you will heal, deliver, set free, break bondages, Lord. That, Lord, you will work it out for that good, Father. You will, Lord, just work it out, Lord. Those that need jobs, Lord, you will fix it, Lord. Those, Lord Jesus, that need a vehicle, Lord, you will fix it, Lord. Those that need a home, you will fix it, Lord. There's nothing too big, nothing too small. Those that need peace, you will fix it, Lord. Those that need deliverance, you will fix it. Those who need healing, you will fix it in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach's precious holy name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're so worthy. We just bless you, Lord. I pray that this edified you. That word of God edified me. What a beautiful word. Beautiful word. Thank you, Father. I pray um, that God bless you on today and that you remember that um, I love you and Jesus loves you too. And always keep God first in everything you do. God bless and have a blessed, blessed day. Love y'all. Bye-bye.